Hello there. Welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly and we are on part four of five of the Nostalgia series where I share 100 more scrapbooking pages. I'm so excited to take you down memory lane. Let's get started. Hello, hello. Here we go, part four of five in my nostalgia series in where I'm honoring my time in Close to My Heart by sharing 100 pages a week for five weeks until the closing of Close to My Heart, my beloved, beloved Close to My Heart. So many pages, thousands and thousands of pages that I've created, uh, a thousand or more pages that I've used, and then I have many that I have yet to use, and I've had so much fun creating each and every one and I had a little bit of butterflies today because this is part four meaning after today there will be 400 plus pages that I've shared but that means next week is the last one so next Monday will be part five of five and we will finish out 500 plus pages so let's just enjoy the trip down memory lane and try not to think about next week um yeah let's be excited so I'm going to move these aside and I'm going to get started I know I I, I know I actually have more than a hundred I really did try to narrow it down I pulled out some companion pages so I could show more paper lines I did the best I could you guys it's hard to to narrow it down some of them are really basic and simple but I had a reason for pulling them so let's get close let's make sure that you're gonna get a good shot today I can go out just a little bit more. There we go. So I'm already going to start off with the first one, struggling. I keep wanting to say noteworthy, but we had an extra set of papers that had little map papers and graph papers and really cool kind of just um, crafty style papers. And I just don't remember. There was like a rustic home or a... Anyway, so this was a very simple layout. This is my husband and I. But why I decided to show this was we had a little rock and roll stamping here where we um, inked our stamp with one color on the bottom and another color on the top and we did some rock and roll stamping and then all of this down here in the journaling is stamping so this was a stamp and then I wrote in handwriting my handwriting but then I embossed little um, sentiments in between so you could make a story out of little story starters so this is why I love you you have such a kind heart you are such a thoughtful husband which is the best I love how you think uh, what I say and do is so funny it is so stinking cute when you laugh I'm so lucky to have met you it makes me happy and it's totally amazing that I've got you in my life that was so clever how they made those little pieces so you could insert your story I loved that I might try to do that again uh, one of these days this one is a silly silly funny one I might have to zoom out for my two pagers so let's zoom out just a little bit. I like it to be as close as it can for you. So this was a little gnome series, garden gnomes. They were so cute. And it's a simple layout. So you're probably wondering, why did you share this one? But I actually did a free um, guide for this. Um, and I posted on my blog that there's a free guide if anybody wants this, the instruction guide. But why I pulled it is every single little gnome is paper pieced so it's stamped on pattern paper and stamped on cardstock and then the little clothes were cut out and they were paper pieced so that the pants and the shirts and the hats could be all different patterns and I was just it's so adorable just like it reminded me like I'm dating myself but it reminded me of paper dolls and I really loved that so that's why I chose to pull that one this one I believe our lovely lovely Karen Pedersen um, just did this as a little side extra it was a, a different pattern where we layered squares on top of each other and then cut them and cut little bits of them to decorate the sides of the pages and there was a focal stamping piece so we did the stamping and then focused on the journaling and I loved that stamp this is my mama who's been in heaven for a long long time and 
she was sick before that for a really, really long time. So I made a special page and we had some really fun techniques where we did stickles on top of acrylic shapes and um, had a lot of fun with that. This was um, oh, Blue Skies. Blue Skies was the collection for that. All right. This one here is one that was a super popular collection change that of was scenery and i've shown several layouts from change of scenery before um in the other videos but i actually chose this one because what i did is i put tiny strips half inch strips on a full almost a full sheet and then i cut them off and cut them both on a diagonal and used one part on top and one part on bottom and put pop each of those up so that I could put the chipboard trees underneath. So you can see that I just actually made the strips and then cut the strips to make a really fun top. The rest of the layout isn't anything fancy, but I loved the concept of something like this and then just did the stamping of the trees behind the die cut trees. And I really loved that technique. All right. Next one, this one was actually, I and I will uh, post any process videos that I have on any of these layouts, but I do have a process video on this one, and I believe it was actually my very first process video on YouTube. So at the very end of April, April 28th is my one year anniversary of doing YouTube, and I think this was my first one, and um, yeah, and I didn't have any idea what I was doing, but I loved using the Hey Handsome collection and I did some non-traditional um, stenciling with a stencil that was more floral and I did the floral in the background just to show how you could do the different stenciling and use different pieces and make it look really interesting and add a lot of texture. That one was fun. Again, I'll link all of those in the description that I have process videos for. There are quite a few in here that I do have process videos before. So this one, why did I share this one? I shared this one because it's cardstock only. And I thought it was, oh, I've got it upside down. I was like, how come it's not coming together? I think there's only a strip of Daisy Meadows in it and all the rest is cardstock only. There's a little hidden journal card that you can pull out here. And all of this is cardstock with different embossing on it and different embossing from embossing folders. And I thought it was interesting. Usually, usually every year we have a cardstock carnival. And so uh, we usually have challenges to do cardstock only scrapbook layouts. This was a stamp of the month bonus kit. So it was only using a stamp and I used some season mix-ins and some of our sweetest honey papers. And so this is stamped here and all of these pieces in here are stamped. And so it's a simple banner layout where I just added all of the sentiments from the stamp of the month at the bottom of a banner and a little um, scribble circle with love in it for the um, for the little element down there on the bottom. The next couple are from Sweet as Honey, and I loved this muted collection. Um, it had a little bit of a vintagey vibe, but it had bees and hives in it. This was one of my Simply scrap in workshops, and so it had really simple patterns in the background, but I don't know if it's the color combination or what it is, but I absolutely loved that. And I had little teeny uh, bees with little swirls around it, it, and they had these cork shapes that were in the shapes of honeycombs and it was super fun. I may have this. Do I have this one upside down too? Oh my gosh. You guys are probably yelling at me like, get it straight, Kelly. All right. The next one is another one of the sweetest honey. And why I pulled this one was the die cuts that came in the kit on this one. Um, we had these little die cuts that were um, hives and then they had the little punch out strips of paper to make the colorful hives. I added the mason jar from the Cricut and some of the little honeycombs from the Cricut and I just made the honeycombs the right size so that they would go right over the top of the honeycomb pattern that's embedded in the background page and then this was a throwaway piece. So this was a die cut punch out sheet and when I punched out all the die cuts and I used up 
all the die cuts, I thought, well, this is kind of an interesting background. I'm just going to stick that back there and it will add a little added texture and a little added interest. So never throw away the leftovers of your punch out sheets. They're so fun. So this one, <laughs> this one makes me laugh, but we had a stamp set that had all different kinds of circle patterns on it. And then we have had a set of all different sizes of circles. And this one was called Candid Moments. And so my girlfriends and I go on an annual girl trip and we truly are 80s girls. We grew up in the 80s. And even though we're 50 something on the backside of 60, um, we um, went on a girl trip and they had an 80s night. And you got in free if you dressed 80s. So we packed a bunch of 80s clothes in our suitcases. Here I am here with the big bangs and the bib overalls and we laughed and laughed and laughed. I think we had a lot more fun getting ready to go to the event, the uh, the costume event, than we did actually at the event itself because we laughed at eyeshadow. Oh my gosh. This also was candid moments and we were given quadrant circle thin cuts. So the thin cut could be cut in a half circle, a quadrant circle, or a whole circle. And we did the stamping with that same circle stamp in the background. And it's so simple, but how cute is that. That's another candid moments. And here's a picture of my girlfriends again on a girl trip. We went on an LED bike ride at night and our bikes lit up and we went on a little island tour. I think that one was either, I think that one was in Seattle. And I used that picture a couple times because it was so much fun. I had forgotten uh, how to ride bike and I didn't think my legs were going to work. Like I, I had, it had been so long. <laughs> I started to pedal and I was like, I don't remember how to ride a bike. And we laughed so hard. I have shown a layout like this style before, but I changed it up with all of the circles. Again, um, so fun. Some of the circles were die cuts that came right in the kit. Some of them were punch outs and some of them were from the Cricut. And I love just building that there and then having a couple focal photos on the right hand side, adding some stickers to a banner and it makes a really really cute focal page still a little bit more of candid moments this one's a little bit busy but fun and i absolutely loved the polaroid effect and the cameras so we had a candid moments camera on the digital collection but we've also had cameras from over the years so i just pulled all the cameras that we've had from our digital collection and then we had sticker cameras that came with candid moments found a little st few starbursts on the Cricut and then just added the cameras and then we had little punch out Polaroid frames here. I think we did. Oh, either that or I just made that out of cardstock. It looks like I just made the Polaroids out of cardstock to go with the cameras. And then it was really neat because I think we had a stamp that had the two-tone letters, but we also had the ability to do that on a Cricut collection or a digital collection as well, where we could do half of the words in one color, the letters in one color, and half of the letters in another color. I had a whole lot of fun with that. Here we're going way back on this one. This one was a uh, funky travel called Urban. It had a real masculine vibe to it, but it also had the possibility of urban, city life, and travel. And so I just clustered a whole bunch of icons. So this was a stamp that came in the stamp set. And I just found all kinds of icons like the Eiffel Tower and a taxi cab and an old typewriter and the, the, um, the globe and a little bicycle and just made it into this eclectic urban feel. And then we had some real funky, fun, distressed stamps that came with that stamp set. So I did a little stamping here and here. Also, around that time, one of our collections had stitched frames on it. And I've used that for years. I have had so much, so much fun with the stitched frames. I've also created those stitch frames myself and taught people how to do that out of a basic shape because the collection that that stitched frame was on is no longer available. So all of the digital collections where I've used it won't open for people. So I actually 
actually am removing it and showing them how to make it in about three to five minutes themselves on the Cricut. It's really easy. So then remember the day of gears that it was all about gears and skater boys and, and, you know, kind of that, that, that era for, for boys and skateboarding and different things. Well, I didn't go the skateboarding route with urban, but I did go with the funky gears, adding some chevrons in the back and then some stamping right on the page. All of these little gears were stamped. That was a really, really super fun collection. All right, I did one more, two more, I guess, of Urban. And I'm not sure why I showed this because this couldn't be more simple, just the squares in the background. But I think it was because we had these Urban stickers. And I decided that they just kind of blended in the background. So I mounted those on black cardstock and trimmed around them and put the cityscape behind it. And I just loved how that center focal piece, like if you needed a page in a hurry, just do all your squares really fast plus it has eight large photo opportunities and then have a really nice feature focal piece in the center we also had some great wood shapes we had a lot of different packages uh, like wood arrows wood stars wood buttons and then continuing on kind of like the tween boy theme just a little bit of funky with the skateboard and cars the stoplights the traffic signs very basic just having an upward focal on either side but I loved the tire tread pattern that came in urban and this was one of our um, uh, bulk papers that we used a ton if the uh, makers used a ton, a ton, a ton of that paper. Now I've shared As You Grow before, some of my more fancy As You Grow pages, but I chose to show this one because it had the circle months. And so it was, you know, this is my little grandson, Waylon James. And obviously when I created this page, he was only six months old and I have to get the other six months in his photos. I didn't finish them because he, I hadn't had any yet because he was only six months old when I made it. But I love collections like this when you have children and grandchildren children where you can have one page with all of the months and you can see the progression of how they grow hence the name as you grow a lot of little speckle stamping in the back fussy cutting of some picture my life cards in there doing some just basic circles I actually had an old three inch circle punch and I just punched all those circles out and then added all the cute little elements like the turtle sticker and all of those things we're going to come back here to Cape Cod. I've shown quite a few Cape Cods, but the reason I wanted to show this Cape Cod was we had the addition of an additional page protector piece here. So this is a very popular split layout. You see them all the time now. It's kind of a new trend where you do a split and you have the title or a focal piece in the center. So what I actually did is I did a larger piece of paper and added the strips across, then cut the strips of paper and then flipped them around so that the patterns were in different places so they didn't look like cookie cutter and then added this page protector so that you could have all of these photo opportunities. So one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and a flip flap, 11, 12 photos on this one layout. And even though it's simple, I like that split concept and adding in our little inserts, our little page protector inserts. And then we had some great kind of like sea glass looking um, uh, acrylic shapes uh, with that. So here we have a cozy up. I do think that I have, I kind of think that I have a process video for this one. So this one was so fun. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. And what I did with this one is we had a little stencil and the stencil for Cozy Up was only about maybe, maybe it was four by four, maybe not even four by four. And it came right in the kit. So if you weren't into stencils, it gave you an opportunity to get a little stencil that came in the kit and all of the leaves and the shading in the background were stencil. And then I found a little leaf, a twig, a wreath on the Cricut and I actually cut some snips out of it so this this I cut this piece out of 
um, or this piece maybe. There are two of them and I just cut them in sections. So this is a little section, this is a little section, this is a little section, and this is a little section. Maybe it was only one and I just cut it in four sections. And then I used the Cozy Up paper, some little season mix-ins, and I was able to put three focal photos, probably kind of hard to see, four focal photos in the center. And then there were some die cut dovetail banners and circles that came right in that kit as well. This is a Simply Scrappin' um, basic background Simply Scrappin' called Cosette. The reason I pulled this one is because all of the little extra pieces are cut out of Picture My Life cards. So this, or pocket cards as some people know them. So this was a pocket card and a lot of these little pieces were just cut out of those pocket cards. So sometimes if you don't want to, if you're working with a lower price point and you want a lower price point, you want to use mostly the cardstock uh, that comes in the kits or the coordinating cardstock as well as the pattern paper you can add little picture my life cards to that and make a really beautiful simple layout by fussy cutting pieces this one I do believe if I don't have a process video for it I did show it on Facebook before and it is our good life collection so I did cricket writing in the background and just found some little country sayings and just did the cricket writing in the background and some distressed inking the windmill came off of our good life collection as did all of the clouds and I just cut those clouds apart and did distress inking on those but this piece in the background this this was I think the last layout in the series I think I made 12 layouts out of good life and I was running out of pattern paper so what I did with this one is I made my own wood grain looking pattern by taking our ink pads and streaking them down on the pattern paper and distressing the edges and it made it look like it was just an additional sheet of pattern paper and it's a great way to stretch your pattern paper pack and this is just uh, my little grandkids playing in the corn playing at the tire swing and having a great day Ooh, this is an oldie so this is also from documented I believe I showed a few documented layouts on the last one but this one is really busy and really unique and so it was about generations and where you came from so this is my mama this is my grandma this is my grandma and this is my great grandma so my mom was very creative and she did latch hook and oil painting and macrame and uh, ceramics and she did so many things and then my this is my mom Georgine my grandmother Laurentina she crocheted and sewed but a lot of crocheting she knitted cro mostly crochet and she made the most beautiful tablecloths. This is my grandma Emily who was a court stenographer and a writer and she invented the very first electric typewriter eraser and it was patented and it came up over her shoulder and it had a little eraser on the end and it actually made a sound like brrrr, and it was huge but it was so interesting that she as a stenographer was like I want an electric typewriter eraser sir and then my great grandmother Schmitz was a seamstress so and then I over here am a memory keeper and I do my art with paper crafting so even though it's a busy layout and it isn't my favorite it is my favorite because it's all of my generations of creativity in my family all right, this one was Aurora, and it's a very simple background, but the reason that I pulled this one, let me go back a little bit so you can see the whole thing, was the holographics. Oh my, did we have fun with the holographic paper. Can you see that? I, I just loved it. It was so beautiful and it takes on, so it's looking blue here, but it's actually mostly silver and it's just so fun. So I created the lanterns on the Cricut and did some silver embellishing thread through the lantern. We had shimmer trim that was silver and then we had acrylic shapes that came with Aurora. And then I just made the background 
tones with that holographic paper and I cut this little thing out of the background on the Cricut and made the little moon and hung the lantern over the moon and that was just a fun different unique thing to do not a fancy layout but just cool because of the holographic paper this one was also from aurora and it had some um, incredible i want to say it was eggplant someone out there will probably correct me but i think it was the eggplant so it was a eggplant and peacock i think and it was very different color scheme but i wanted to do the camping and then a little bit of a mirrored image and flipped so it's upside down and so the only reason i pulled this was basically because it was such a fun textured title. Really, really fun uh, play on that. Sometimes I'm a little different and it flies, and sometimes I'm a little different and it's like, what were you thinking? But I love experimenting. I think, let's see, I think this does not go with this. I think this is a single, and maybe it was a double, and I just pulled it out so that we could get through here. And this one was another one with Aurora. And it was in the early tearing days where now we tear everything, but we were tearing for a mountain feel. The die cut wheel came right in the kit and um, most everything, the stickers and everything came right in the kit as well. And then we were able to back the compass with some great pattern papers. And there's that, I think it's eggplant. I don't know. Here's a simple one with Aurora but what I did is I took the I just didn't know what to do with some of the die cuts so um, I loved the background paper I didn't want to mess with the background paper because the mountains are embedded in the background paper I loved the stitch frames and um, the tearing on the bottom of those frames even though it wasn't tearing it was actually a Cricut cut so I cut the two wheels that came in the kit in half and then just did a little play with all of the extra acrylic shapes that I didn't quite know what to do with and the rest are stickers and a little bit of silver embellishing thread and then it had that embedded foil look right in the stickers the next one was life's a hoot again a basic grid style you know someone asked me on my last video you talk about grid style or basic grid style where does that come from grid just means that you have even squares or some kind of squares in a grid so you can make any size grid a four by four grid a three by three grid a two by two grid and so Grids are used so, so much in scrapbooking, but the reason I pulled this one was we got this beautiful um, swirly frame as part of the Life's A Hoot collection. And you guys know me, I'm a grid girl, I'm an overlay girl, I'm a background girl, and anytime we get a new grid or a new background, I'm all over it. All right, this one, I think I pulled this one. This one is Life's A Hoot as well really soft. I loved the soft colors in it. And the only hard thing about um, these types of paper lines with the soft colors is they're gorgeous in person, but they don't show up on photos very well. So they don't get the billing that they deserve. Um, they're really, really pretty in person, but on photos, uh, I don't think people get the wow out of it, That, but that's so pretty. But what I wanted to show on this one was the little transition. So I found just a cute little little uh these little flowers on the Cricut and I just welded each of them together you could probably find one that's already together but let me turn it this way so you can see the texture and that is it I made the basic layout but added adding just that little teeny tiny bit of texture made all of the difference in the world so if you could be brave enough to just add a little strip of something from the Cricut or from a die cut piece, you will love it. This was another Life's a Hoot and I had so much fun with this because I had backed the flowers with pattern paper. I did paper piecing on the flowers behind the Cricut cuts. Actually, they could have been die cuts that came in the kit or maybe they were Cricut cuts that I made. And I just did the paper piecing in the back and the the jury was out on this collection. Some people were like, ew, I hate owls. The owls are creepy. And other people were like, owls are the cutest thing in the entire world. So I made a one where you could tuck the little owl 
towel behind and only his little eyes were showing. So if you thought he was cute, he would be cute hiding back there. And if you didn't like owls, he wasn't the feature of the page. I was trying to make everyone happy. But this background piece is a blotch. If you type blotch or splotch or splat or something like that in the Cricut, you get these little uh, pieces that you can cut out. You could also do that with a little paste or some kind of other texture. But then I also, again, was showing my paper crafters that you can cut things out of the Cricut for texture in the background. And it just loved all the dimension in that. This one was one more Life's a Hoot, the last one. Nothing super special about the, the uh, background layout of this page. Again, uh, what I would probably consider a grid, but I loved this play. So what I did is I took a piece of pattern paper and I left the zip strip attached. Then I scored it, I think like, looks like half inch, quarter inch, half inch, quarter inch, all the way down, folded it like an accordion to give it that texture. If you can see that texture in there. And then I just folded the paper into tabs on the side to give it a little bit of a fun play. So again, such a basic background, but just doing the little layering of the paper and making the tabs. And then I believe all the little half circles were punch outs that came right in the kit. That was fun. I should do that again. I'm getting so many ideas to do that again. This is a Simply Scrappin. So Simply Scrappin means no Cricut cuts. And it was Coast Set. But I felt like it was worth bringing out and mentioning because old time black and white photos are beautiful in floral. You know, just because it reminds you of back in that day. Like my mom had like floral wallpaper and she had bright yellow counter and her appliances were bright yellow and, <laughs> and everything was flowery and I love it with black and white. This is my mom and my dad and my brother and I um, and I love that and look at my mother's hair. <laughs> <laughs> I love, just, just wanted to show that. That was fun. This one, I believe I do have a process video. This is myself and my grandson, my youngest grandson out of eight, Waylon James. And for this one, I think these go together. I'm pretty sure they do. I did all the stenciling in the back. This one is cozy up. And again, we had a small stencil and a blending brush and I just did all the stenciling in the back. The books were long stickers. I think they were 12 inch stickers and there were two 12 inch book stickers and I just cut them along, put a little piece of cardstock along them to, to make them look like a bookshelf, added a little ladder from the Cricut, like you're climbing up the ladder to, to uh, get a story. And then here's my little Waylon James and I'm just reading him a story. I did add a little flip flap that said just one more, one more book. Ah, so fun, so fun. I will link again all of those that have process videos up in the description. I did pull another Good Life and this was relatively recent. The reason I pulled this Good Life is because it can look completely different. So I showed you the windmill Good Life with all the distressing, but how different does this look from the same collection? So there was a busy pattern of farm icons that were it was a little hard to use. So I like to use those bitty busy patterns as backgrounds, but I actually cut a little bit of chicken wire off of the Cricut and then I shaded it with a little bit of ink and then I made this uh, overlay in the background and I went over it. So what I did is I took the scallop square, I grabbed another scallop square that was just a little smaller, put it on the inside of that on the Cricut, turned it into writing instead of cutting so that it would write on the inside of that scallop square. And then we had all these great die cuts. So this was at the ranch out by the barn. And this is my son, our son and daughter-in-law and their three kids. And they're pretending to peek around while mom and dad are kissing. <laughs> 
<laughs> I loved those photos. I love just getting natural photos out at the ranch and just being silly, but making my kids kind of do poses for me. Another one of those good life where all I did is add a large cream can. And what I was showing on this one is how to gut smaller pieces inside so that because I think the back of this paper was a wood grain that I loved. And so instead of gutting the whole thing so that you have to have a gutted frame, I showed how you could just gut a smaller section out of paper and just kind of slice it and cover it with photos so that you could retain a little bit of that paper from the back side. Super fun. It's a little bit of what, what do you want to say? Fancy footwork when you're cutting. But when you get used to doing that, you think of creative ways, uh, especially if there's a pattern on the back that you love. This one, I believe I do have a process video for. And again, good life. Making the fence in the background. Some little cricket hay bales here, right here. And this is Waylon James feeding the goats and then just strips. I didn't have enough pattern paper left to do the strips, so I made little pieces. I didn't even really measure. I just snipped the scraps that I had left and just tucked them up and tucked them down to make a really fun layout with that. I have one more good life that's really simple, but I also don't only want to show the ones that have Cricut cuts. I want to show how beautiful the pages can turn out when you have no Cricut cuts at all. And Good Life was a perfect one for a traditional patchwork vibe. So your squares again, large squares, little squares, and then you've just got a few little die cuts. Understated, but beautiful. All right, this next one is so playful and fun. So this was called Besties. We had, um, Besties was a stamp set and it had little girls and they all had names like Chloe and I can't remember all their names, but they were all different girls. And then Besties, we had Besties for boys, Besties for girls, Besties Halloween. And so they were all characters. And this little one had a little puppy dog. And so we had, um, Gosh, I can't remember the little postage stamp, if that was a die cut. Uh, the rainbow was a die cut that we received. I think I made the postage stamps on the Cricut maybe and just made it fun, just busy and fun. And it was for pre-tween. So some of my pre-tween uh, granddaughters and I thought that was just kind of playful. This one, I pulled these two and I didn't even count them in my count because I only pulled them. They were a national scrapbooking special and she was called Party Girl. And um, she was paper pieced. And I just wanted to show you the paper piece. Look at those heels. So what we did is we stamped her on the page. Then we stamped her again on this beautiful foil paper that I think was from You Are Enough. And then we cut out her dress, her little hairband, and those high heels. And can you see how cute that was to paper piece her like that? And here it is again, another one that shows her paper piece, even her little, she's holding a little candy apple and her little dress and her little hair thing with her dress paper pieced on that. That was such a fun technique. Here's another old, old, old one. I think it's called Falling For You. And I was experimenting back then with Cricut writing. And this was a little Cricut tree. And I just did the little writing all the way around and a little focal photo. Really, really old. One of my first workshops, I'm sure. I pulled a couple of those actually because this was pre cricket so I didn't have any cricket pieces for this and I just flipped the pattern so we did the little crisscross which you see that a lot but I loved it with the strips on the bottom and then all of these are picture my life cards and all of these little flowers except for maybe this one and the butterfly are cut out of those picture my life cards to give me 
some little ephemera to play with, to work with, to have something to decorate with. Here's another oldie oldie. Again, I think it's called Falling For You. And this was in the day when we didn't have a Cricut collection that had a wheelbarrow. So I made that wheelbarrow myself out of triangles. And so you can see how primitive it looks, but we had the little rake and the little wheelbarrow. And I have since done lots of pages with really cool, fun wheelbarrows. In fact, you'll see one coming up because everything had evolved and we had so many more more um, SVGs that were so special that um, that they've perfected that uh, a lot. Here is one yesterday and today. The reason I pulled this one is because this pattern that you see in the background was so widely used by makers. It was from one of our Make It From The Heart books and they just showed a certain shape on either side and linear photos. And so people used like half of a banner, they used a circles, they used labels, they used all kinds of things to create that whole shape so that it was split in the middle and it was on either side. And it's been seen and used and used and used. But yesterday and today was a vintage -y, uh, heritage collection and they gave us the rolling flowers. I was terrible at it so don't look at my work and judge but I you rolled them with a pencil so you had strips and you rolled them with a pencil and you use liquid glass to hold them down and what I love about this is this this just screams my grandmother she would have loved this so much she loved paper flowers and things like that and then we did distressing and markering on the shapes as well um, this one, okay, this one's funny. This was called Hey There Pumpkin. And I actually did a Halloween version workshop and a non-Halloween version workshop. And again, back when we didn't have a scarecrow on the cricket, so I made my own. I pieced together a hat from one collection. His hair was actually grass. And so I just stuck <laughs> grass under there to make that. I don't know what this thing is. Oh, I've got something. I'm so sorry. I'm pulling my pages apart. There was a sticker stuck to it. Uh, so I think it was just this little, this little arrow sticker. But the reason I pulled it, uh, when you're looking at my primitive scarecrow that I made, hey, creativity or necessity breeds creativity. If you don't have something, I actually made this out of branches and I just stuck branches under him. But the reason I pulled it is these hay bales. So we got a tassel maker. So this was a thin cut that would make tassels. And so you had um, little cuts on one end and cuts on the other and you would roll it together and it would make a little tassel and you could tie it with the string. And I thought, I think that screams hay bale to me. So I made them and pieced them together and made little hay bales out of those. So so that's why I pulled that one. This one is more recent. This is Love Notes. I pulled this one because of the wonky play on the strips, but it still has a beautiful focal photo and it's longer even than a Polaroid for your journaling on the bottom. A little fun inking on the back. But what I did is I laid the strips on a piece of paper first and then fussy cut underneath so that I could pop all the strips up instead of popping each individual strip strip and it was just sort of a really fun quick and easy layout and that's my beautiful friend for 40 years is her name is Debbie. Here is another Love Notes. And the reason I pulled this Love Notes was only one reason. Because I love my grandson. <laughs> Nothing special to say about this layout except for his face popping those bubbles. It was worth bringing out just to show you him and his wonder with simple bubbles. But there is, uh, there is a lesson just... Don't worry about having fancy family photos and, and, and all of that. All those are wonderful to have, but just bubble photos and sitting out in the yard photos and swinging on the swing photos. Okay, ah, I lost my cheat sheet. Uh, I think this was 
Ooh, it could have been spooktacular. It could have been Boo Crew. It could have been, I've got candy. I don't remember. Uh, somebody's screaming at me out there, but it had these little thin cut ghosts and then you could dress them up. Some of them were all dressed up with bow ties. Some of them had different hats. They had little brooms. They had, the bat was part of the thin cut collection. The pumpkin was. And then we had these great fall leaves that fall and our circle shaker windows. And I just made a big spooky title and cut out the original O's and put the shaker windows in the middle of spooky. This one I pulled, it was pumpkin spice, I think. The reason I pulled this is because it's a great example of how simple you can make a background, but have it be a little bit more unique. Instead of just plain squares, I actually cut a little star out of a bunch of squares and then added circle photos in the center. And I did standard three inch because lots of people have like a three inch punch. And then you could put your three inch photos in there and some of it could be pattern paper, some of it could be sticker. And then I did a little tiny bit of splattering, but not much, very understated but a different play on a grid, right? Okay, we're getting there. The pile is getting smaller. So here is a funky one. Do you guys remember fresh paint? It was hard. I had a hard time with fresh paint. It was graffiti style. And I decided to grab these paint cans, cut these paint cans on the Cricut and use cardstock only except for a few stickers so this every day on the bottom is a sticker so i just did monochromatic in rows so i did the greens the orangey yellow the red the yellow here's the orange again the red and the blue so i pulled all the blue stickers off the sticker sheet for here and the red here and the and so on and so forth you get the idea and i thought that was really super playful um i thought that might be fun for paintball. I thought it might be fun for um, painting at art art uh, for the kiddos. Um, yeah, there's lots of fun things that I think we could use that for. Uh, this is one I have shown before. I can't remember if I have a process video for it uh, or if I've just shown it on film before because of the distressed tearing. So we have the new line that's called Let's Go Anywhere and it had a nice torn area out of it and I had said that before that came out I love doing that distress technique where you're just putting layers underneath so I tore the base French vanilla piece and then I just tucked little pieces of torn paper under it and then I carried that theme over to the right side so you can see that just looks like a tattered little piece and it was Good Life the Good Life collection and I just did a ton of distressing with toffee adding all the stickers and this is my husband and the oldest son and our oldest grandson who is now 13 um, and so, yeah, uh, we have only two grandsons and six granddaughters. So, uh, so they're kind of, uh, out, they outweigh, uh, the girls outweigh the boys. This is old. This is a really, really oldie, oldie, oldie. This is called Sweet Girl. I don't know how many of you remember Sweet Girl. We had a wood grain in it and we actually did a herringbone technique on another layout that was really, really hard for me because I was a beginning scrapbooker at the time that I made this and um, we had embossing folders. So we did some embossing on the pages and these were little bunny stickers that were kind of like chipboard. And then we had some um, embroidery thread. So I just made a little nest by wrapping embroidery thread around a circle and put the little bird in the nest and did a little bit of texture on the background. I had no idea what I was doing. I just thought the little characters were cute and it would be a really sweet baby girl layout. This one I did do a process video. The stack is getting littler, you guys. Thanks for hanging with me. This one I did do a process video on. One of my earlier ones on YouTube. Again, I'm coming up on my year anniversary at the end of the month. Um, but it was a stamp of the month. And so I wanted to show this beautiful stamp, the, um, the bee 
and the hive were stamps of the month. And so I did little honeycomb Cricut backgrounds. I showed how to cut your own little stencils. We also had some honeycomb stencils, so I showed both ways. We had a little honeycomb stamp, and I actually incorporated all the things in terms of paper. There's a little Cape Cod in there. There's a little season mix-ins. There's a little cozy up. There's a, I think that's it. And then a lot of little distress stamping in the background. And then I made the little mason jar on the Cricut and stamped the hi inside my little uh, granddaughter saying hi. And I put some of our clear beads inside that. I'll link that process video in the description. This one, I think I showed a couple of these before. I was the guest designer for this series called All, For Always, For Always, and it had this great uh, doily stamp. And inside of the doily was the star shape. And so over here on this one, you can see the whole doily, but I stamped that on paper and cut the stars out and made star flowers out of that. Pretty basic background, but I did distress stamping on the edges, a little bit of gel pen, and then um, today is a gift is, oh, it's not sideways. The whole thing is sideways. <laughs> Sorry. And then I made this by stamping in the background, first and second generation, and rubbing it with ink. I made this piece by just stamping a piece of cardstock in the background with a striped stamp, and then just had a little bit of play on the sides there. And I loved that um, doily to make the star flowers out of the doily. Here's another one of those that I made. And I'll miss being, uh, you know, the learning and the can't remember how this goes. I think I think it maybe goes this way. This doesn't quite look right or make sense. I'll have to go look at I think maybe it goes this way um, so that this goes down like this. I think that's the way it is. And so again, all of the background stamping uh, with the doily, making my own tags and stamping them with the For Always stamp set, doing a little distressing with the white gel pen, some background stamping right directly on the page, using my black Le Pen around some of those spots there. Really loved this collection and loved the opportunity to be a guest designer for Close to My Heart. It helped me to grow and learn and do some things a little bit differently. So I really enjoyed that experience. I will miss that. This is an oldie. This is called, drum roll, do you guys remember? Fresh Air. Fresh Air was an outdoorsy line and I just made a variety of mountains in the background and that was back in the day when I, I stamped a camera on the middle so that you would know to put your photo on. <laughs> as if you didn't know to put a photo on there I had to make sure to stamp that so you knew that tells you how old this is I was so new but I did do some stamping on the page and stamping of all the little pine cones some little bit of stamping in the background here peeking out from under the mountains and that was about the extent of my skill back then I had no idea what I was doing all right but the fun thing is and the lesson learned is there's no right or wrong when you're creating your pages have fun do what feels right for you your art is your art and love it embrace it all right gnomes for autumn of course I have full process videos for all the gnomes for autumn uh, probably many of you have seen them but I had to bring those cute little gnomes out again a couple whiskey barrels here and our um, I think they were called textured leaves um, really Really, really beautiful leaves some cork shapes in the background added uh, some season mix-ins to that to stretch that pack another one of the gnomes for autumn here a uh, stitched background frame yeah I'm famous for those again cut some little holes in the background stuck the little gnomies in there used the textured leaves just had playful playful fun added some carving pumpkin or painting pumpkin photos with my grandchildren here's one of my granddaughters Claire Adeline and this was another one of the gnomes for autumn series and I did cricket writing on the back 
background. This was the Stampin' Thin Cut that came with it. Uh, uh, there was an alternative if you didn't want to do gnomes. We had a Gnomes for Autumn Stampin' Thin Cut that you could, uh, had all different little fall icons, pumpkins and sunflowers. Did a little distress inking in the back, added some stickles as well, and it was so fun and so playful and cute. Okay, let's see here. One more, I guess, Gnomes for Autumn. And I talked about my primitive wheelbarrow earlier. And here we have evolved uh, a lot of years later with a cute little rustic wheelbarrow. Same concept, my little Gnomey working so hard, picking up all of the leaves. We got some little mushrooms and pumpkins and did a little doodling in the background. And this was distress stamping in the background, just stamping all of the words, highlighting a few of the words with a blending brush, basic strips in the background, and then the fall photos with my two of my grandkids. Fun. All right, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. I don't know why. I hope this one isn't getting longer. I've tried to keep all of the previous three 100 layout shares down under an hour. So I'm really hoping I'm I'm not pushing this one. This was Wonderland. And this was um, no Cricut cuts. It was all sticker scenes and punch out die cuts. And this was a pattern from from one of our brand new pattern books that we had received at the time that had little bitty squares on the side to decorate and then an upper grid so you had an upper grid and then you could create the scene down below and I just thought that was fun and the colors of Wonderland were incredible all right we're going back to I believe I'm not sure but I believe this could have been an album retreat and we had some circle dies again that I showed earlier Earlier that had halves and quadrants and so we made backgrounds with the halves and quadrants and then we did the stamping of cardstock so this is our own stamped pattern on cardstock and then created the page using the acrylic alphabet we had acrylic alphabet letters that you could make your own titles I carried it through with one of my own and made some quadrant circles and some stamped on circles and some cricket circles with arrows and just did a huge cluster to do circle photos and a little bit of a play on that with the title You Matter. Okay, I believe this could have also been an album retreat. We received this overlay and we backed the overlay with pattern paper and then we did our own doodling on some scallop pieces and they were teaching a little watercolor distressing in the background and I loved the focal piece right up my alley because I'm a big cricket girl. This is my girlfriends and I and this is all of our feet united as we go and we were on another adventure. Adventure. Okay, and one more of those I pulled that has that same bike photo on it because it was texture paste. So we colored and watercolored texture paste. We did watercolor splattering. Then we did coloring on wooden shapes to create really fun textured background. I will admit I don't do a lot of texture paste or a lot of that. I usually typically find other ways to add texture, but it is a neat technique if you're into that. So all of this was textured paste and then, whoops, it looks like I'm coming apart here we made a circle I mean a, a shaker out of one of our flip flaps and obviously I didn't get mine sealed we also received uh we had ah I think yeah a thin cut that made um um you guys why can't I fringe a fringe and that was really really fun and we used that on it as well I loved the color scheme in that one all right we're going I think we have maybe like four more and we're all done so here we are back to Halloween and why did I pull this one I can't remember why I pulled this one. Maybe it was the stitched overlay in the background using it in a different way instead of a wide frame. And then the layers underneath, layering that and then adding the cute little shaker as a focal element. We had some confetti that had, uh, or sequins that had spiders and ghosts and all kinds of things in that. This could have been, 
for I Want Candy, Spooktacular. And then this one I pulled simply because I wanted to show how you could take that same Halloween line and actually make it in non-Halloween, no Cricut cuts or anything, using really large squares that were cut into triangles as a real fun play on the background. Nothing else uh, unique about it, just taking that same Halloween paper and turning that Halloween paper into just a fun generic layout that did not have have a Halloween theme. This was a giveaway layout that I made. I think it was using a stamp of the month and the stamp of the month only had words. And so it was words, arrows, words, words, and then a little bit of texture in the background and plain circles. This was from our Bloom with Grace stamp set and had this cute cowgirl boot and then the wonderful florals in there and I just added sunflowers in there and I added little banners with some gold embellishing thread and did all the stamping on here as well. Added a little bit of our desert rose glitter paper and had to add some of our little bitty sparkles on the spur. I love that set. I'm gonna get that out again this fall. We are down to it. Three pages left. Back to Hope and Kindness. Hope and Kindness was a collection that I was the guest designer for for Close to My Heart. The reason I pulled this out is the simple background. A simple, classic background that you can use over and over and over with different pattern papers and doing different clustering with different elements. So I have my visual triangle here. We have some fancy doilies that we created uh, out of a thin cut and the rest is all stickers and die cuts. But that background is a background that I've loved to use over and over and over in my scrapbooking and I never get tired of it. And the last page, we are for sure supposed to be at 400 pages. I would not be surprised if we're at 450, but again, another hope and kindness. So simple, but the reason I pulled it out is the diagonal play. So just cutting your rectangle snipping a little bit off of the edge and having that diagonal play. This was from the Stampin' Thin Cut and all of these flowers were fussy cut out of the pattern paper and this gorgeous pattern paper of Hope and Kindness was my all-time favorite. Absolutely loved it. Thank you everyone for watching. We've made it through 400 plus pages and sadly there's only one week left in my nostalgia series. I hope you had fun going Going back down memory lane and it made you think of all the creative things that you've done uh, throughout and it also gave you inspiration moving forward. What's old is new again and we can reuse many of these ideas moving forward and add new trends to them as well. Stay tuned, hit like, subscribe, shoot me a comment and come back again next Monday for our final 100 layout share. Thanks so much. Happy scrapping and see you next time right here on Snips by Kelly.